A ripoff of uh, the Trauma Center series. No, that it's a PS2 game. There's a DS one. What, do, what am I thinking of then? DS Lifeline? Lifeline. Nope, that is not coming up. Uh, well, I don't know what I'm talking about then. What am I talking about? There's <laughs> there's a DS game that's a ripoff of the Trauma Center series. I'm pretty sure it's from Konami. Uh, look at that. Anyway, I'm sure I'm sure someone will find it up on the uh, in the chat. Anyway, we're talking about Lifeline Mobile. Um, yeah. This was a small little game. Came out sometime in the summertime, I think it was. Yeah. And it was an interactive story just binary choices to through and through, but you're basically someone was stranded on a weird planet and you interact with them through like notifications on your phone. Yeah. They're text messaging them. you. Basically. They're basically text messaging you. Yeah. yeah. And you can, you know, if you have a, if you have a, um, an iPhone, you just kind of swipe to the, I guess to the left to get your two options and you just send that back and that's you playing the game. And then they'll be like, cool, I'm going to go try that. Like your option could be like, no, I think you should huddle for shelter or it's like, you should go check out that rock and they'll be like okay i'm gonna check out the rock I'll, I'll get back to you a little later and then maybe an hour or two later they'll be like hey i made it to the rock um there's a crazy alien here like i don't know what to do now <laughs> or something um and your character could die i actually managed to win that game in my first play which is probably not ideal because you would kind of want to see the other paths but i definitely did stop after that um but i just was completely like enamored with the cool interface of text messaging. And I've, I've never seen that before. I haven't seen anything do that since. And that was just so cool to me that I needed to give it a, 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 a spot on my top 10. Yeah. And Oh yeah. Communities communities. Number 10 game was bloodborne. Yep. So that was their nice. 10th favorite game of the year. Paul. Let's yes. start us off number eight, uh, nine. Number nine. Let's just is, skip number nine. <laughs> yeah, fuck number nine. Number nine is Rocket League because okay. much like Duck Game, that game uh, like is funner with people, but I had more, like I had enough fun playing it single player as well with random people. Uh, yeah, that was just a blast and I love yeah. playing that game. Yeah, Rocket League's on my list as well. Rocket League is also on my list further up. Uh, Rocket League is just so much fun. Like, we already yeah. all talked about Rocket League. Yeah, but we kind of gushed about this one already. It's such a blast. It came out of nowhere, and it's like anyone can play it, and you're doing flips, you're hitting the ball, you're doing cool dunks, soccer-style dunks or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's a... like Rocket League is so much fun. It's <clears throat> so much fun. Yeah. And it was sure. free. It was a free game. That's, and yeah. for those who didn't get it free, it's 20 bucks, which is also still a really good deal. For, for sure. sure. For sure. John, you're number nine. My number nine is Mortal Kombat 10. Uh, um, I probably would have put this up a little bit higher, but the launch for that game was terrible. Yeah. Like, it was like, one no of the No matter most what system you played on. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, it, the, once things worked, it was pretty good. Uh, the storyline was good. Not as good as Nines, but still pretty good. Uh, the gameplay was actually really fun. All the characters were fun to use, even though uh, I didn't have too much problem with the net play. I had issues with people being, like, spamming assholes. But, I mean, that's any fighting game at this point. Sure, yeah. Sure. Right. It was fun to see Variety. They kept adding some really interesting guest characters, like Alien and Predator, uh, Jason. They added some actual, like, far forgotten characters from the Mortal Kombat world. It was just, it was cool. And it was actually like an actual continuation of the story. Like, hey, this is what happened to these characters after we completely fucked up the storyline with Nine. They did just did some cool things overall that I really liked. Sure. So, Didn't they just uh, announce like another four characters? I think they did. Yeah, I think that's where Alien was. This was like a month ago they announced it. Alien, I believe, was one of the four. Was it Alien or was it Predator? Maybe it's Alien. I guess it's I Alien. Think I, they did both was, I think now. Predator was in the first four. Was in the first. Okay. Yeah. So they, they did do both. That's what I was thinking. I thought they did both. So, okay. Um, very cool. My number nine is Box Boy. Okay. The, nice. Box Boy's on my list. This came out uh, pretty early in the year. Another small downloadable game on the 3DS. I believe it's by HAL Laboratories. Is that correct? The yes, Kirby it's people? By, it's the Kirby people. HAL. The Kirby people. <laughs> um, it's like a, I don't know, maybe like five hours, kind of, you know, short game, but it's just like a solid platformer, super cute. You get to dress up your guy in like ninja outfits or pirate outfits or whatever kind of outfits. And yeah, when I got it, I just played it like, like I think two sittings, just back to back two days. 
and yeah, Box Boy is just it's a lot of fun, super charming, and I would love like a Box Boy too. Like it was it was like a perfect like bite sized thing. I, I could go for more Box Boy. And the community's number nine was Yoshi's Woolly World. All right, that's a good yep. choice. Paul, your number eight. My number eight is Heroes of the Storm. That game completely okay. changed how I play MOBAs because it's streamlined. There's no like weird bullshit you laning phase and stuff where you're just spending 20 minutes like killing creeps and stuff. It's very much getting in with your friends and just like doing some team fights and just like pushing as much as you can. Like it is probably exactly what I've always wanted from a MOBA just an easier like version of that gameplay style that you can do in 20 minutes and then call it a day if you want, or you could like do 10 games and spend two hours doing it or whatever you want. So I played a lot of, I put a lot of time into that game with a lot of people this year. So yeah, that's a good one. All right. My number eight is Batman Arkham Knight. All right. This, uh, I had taken off, the year from I didn't play uh, Origins so I had had a nice gap between City and Night so I was ready for a new Batman game and I hate open world games but I've always loved the Batman games so I was ready for this and I was really happy about it the only reason it's so low on the list is because of the damn Batmobile it ruins that game there's points where it just it's perfect it does everything you need it's fun to use and then there's points where it is just will make you pull out your hair in frustration it's just so aggravating Mm -hmm. If they had fixed the driving or if they had uh, not had the Batmobile in their period, I think it probably would be in top three. But because of that, mm, it also, oh, also the, uh, there's so much sub content, which it, it just kind of drags, unfortunately. Like <laughs> yeah. I did all the missions. Wow. There are a lot of side missions. Wow. But um, I still enjoyed it, even though I was getting frustrated by the end, uh, especially by the Batmobile. But still good. And I'm curious to see how that DLC is. I didn't try out any of the DLC that came out this year, but apparently it was all good. Cool. I, I feel like most people skipped Origins, it sounds like. I seem to be like the one person who played Origins. Um, uh, but yeah, no. Uh, Arkham Knight was real close to being on my list. Uh, that's, that's for sure. Uh, I'm almost a little worried about saying mine. Uh, <laughs> Undertale is number eight. Okay. That's on my uh, list somewhere. That's on I, my list. I assumed it was on your list, and I'm glad we put in this rule. Because uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's pretty up there on your guys list uh, again i have no idea i'm just that's why i was a little worried i didn't want to spoil anything sure. undertale's a cool game um you guys I, I i clearly i only played it once i didn't like research it you guys had tell me a lot about the the more nuances that i definitely missed uh but that is definitely a cool game the music's real good nice uh and it's just an enjoyable time i think i played it in like two sittings uh i agree with you paul the first little bit is not the best part of the game but it definitely does pick up. Yeah, yeah. The, the the beginning of the game is the worst part of Undertale. I, yeah. I don't think anyone will disagree with that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, that was a... Yeah, people are asking. I did a neutral one. I talked about it on last week's episode. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I still had fun. There's That that robot is my favorite character, and any time he popped up was lots of fun. There's like a cooking part. That part was great. Me Metaton's pretty good. Metaton's yeah. great, yeah. Uh, what do you guys think? What are your Undertale parts? Okay, we have to say, are we doing spoilers at all? I, I, uh, I, I say no, because there's still a lot of people who are Okay, if we it. say no, then I'm just going to say Undertale's good, and you should just fucking play it. Done. <laughs> okay. Uh, the end of Genocide, as in like the final fight, is probably my favorite moment of gameplay, and my favorite moment of kind of everything else would be uh, the interactions with, or the uh, like off-story interactions with Papyrus and Undyne. Okay. All right. Then let's move to the community's number eight, and that is The Witcher 3. Oh, wow. There you go. Nice. Paul, number seven. Number seven is actually a very, very recent one Rainbow Six Siege. And okay. this is, All right. <laughs> this is again going to like what the last, uh, I guess, three have been. It's multiplayer focused. It's all multiplayer. So like when you have your full group, it is at like its prime. It's at its perfect peak. Otherwise, it's just kind of like a multiplayer shooter and you can get matched up with assholes and stuff like that. But the reason why it's on this list is because 
it's not played like a shooter like a CSGO or like even a Team Fortress or anything would be. It's 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 very much its own style of gameplay, which hasn't really been done yet. Like the way it's nuanced hasn't really been done even by other Rainbow Six games. It's kind of like the perfect evolution of what Rainbow Six used to be into the first person shooter category now. And I mm. think they just make some really, really good decisions with how that game plays out. I think there still needs a little bit of work. Like I finally got to play it last night with Paul and a bunch of other people. I had a lot of fun, but like it didn't even crack honorable mentions for me because it was just the the learning curve is surprisingly steep when mm. you have to get used to the fact that any anywhere in any other game you've played you think would be safe is no longer safe. That's what I love like, about it. Yeah. That's the coolest thing, but it's also like the I, I guess a detriment when you're starting out. Like it took I think we played for like four hours and I think it only started clicking by the very end of it. Yeah. Like, I played this game in beta twice, and I hated it. And then, like, I was just like, you know what? I could go for a bit more of this. <clears throat> and, um, like, a friend of mine in front of the show, Spart, he gave me, like, a free pass for a weekend or whatever that he had. And, like, I just played more and more of it, and then I it clicked. Like, there's a moment where that game clicks with you, and you realize, I have to play this differently. And then you start, like, breaking open how that game's supposed to be played and how walls are no longer places you should be like maybe barricading up but they are like ways you should be looking down a hallway to shoot an unsuspecting victim or like secret places you can blow up to like really get the drop on people that game never plays out the same way twice in a round because of all the different like variations you can attack and defend on it's just like really really good all right all right my number seven was rocket league we've already talked about this but yeah, fun, solid multiplayer game. Kind of a surprise. Super fun. Uh, super aggravating. I mean, but that's a multiplayer sure. game. That's yeah. how it works. Yeah. I like it. There's there's a lot more nuance to that. Like, watching people who have mastered flying in that game play, it's a whole different game, and it's so entertaining to watch and to play. Yep. Yep. That's also on my list. That's a great game. Uh, my number seven was Guitar Hero Live. Cool. Nice. Yeah, uh, I kind of I mentioned it kind of all before. Uh, just to quick reiterate, uh, I like the changes they made. Uh, I love the uh, the the kind of free to play ish model of uh, all the songs and having so many different songs and then just adding new songs and you you immediately have access to them and just sit down, see what's already playing and you're playing along with people at all times. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a nice twist on the formula. And the community's number seven was Rocket League. Nice. Yeah. There you go. Kenny and I are agreeing, apparently. For a yeah. long time, Rocket League was my number seven as well until I did some rearranging. So <clears throat> that's like the perfect spot for that game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number six, and even though like it's one of probably the buggiest and kind of garbage ES game I played this year, Fallout 4 took up more of my fucking time than it probably ever should have. And I had a great time for as much time as I put into it as well until I got kind of sick by for by it by the end there. Um, that game is a buggy mess in the way Bethesda does buggy messes. And once you get over that, like the disappointing parts about it, obviously, is that it feels like less of an RPG because of the dialogue system being cut down so brutally. And it's just kind of more of like a bad shooter than like a good RP a decent RPG with shooting mechanics but like it feels like the progression of Fallout maybe just not like as far as I wanted it which kind of kept it from being further up on my list like it feels more like a Fallout 3.5 or something and I was totally ready in my life when it came out to have another Fallout 3 so yeah I enjoyed my time with it nice uh, my number six, uh, a game that I played at E3, and I was like, this will be like a fun diversion thing. Ended up being a lot better than I thought it would be, Splatoon. Uh, Splatoon's great. Honestly, surprisingly shot game that it came out as great as it did. Uh, Nintendo has been putting out free content for that game for quite a while, and I hope they keep doing it because it keeps that game fresh. The only qualm is some of that content should have been there when the game came out in the first place. But yep. that's uh, kind of par for the course now for Nintendo, unfortunately. But uh, I don't know. It it was a good take on the genre. Uh, like, it's a shooter where you don't actually... You're not supposed to technically be shooting the other players. 
Uh, it's all about like how much you can cover ground and like they keep the the whole like atmosphere of the game is great. It feels like Jet Set Radio. Um, it's just I don't know. It just came out of nowhere to me, and it just it was so fun and just so different. Yeah, it's it a unique like, game. Yeah, like there's nothing really like it on the market, and like that's kind of the Nintendo thing. I never thought Nintendo would make an entertaining shooter, but sure enough, they did. It's a, it's got a lot of personality that game. Uh, my number six is super mario maker cool that game's just like unbelievable like it, it's so much so many cool things have come out of that game and uh i haven't made a lot of stages myself but uh i love seeing what's out there i, I watch plenty of youtube stuff of people playing just the craziest looking stages and it's just so fun seeing what people are coming up with uh seeing what people have to do to complete these stages and what's possible and they're adding more stuff again like you're like much like your splatoon they're adding more stuff every month it seems like and they're meaningful updates and i just can't wait to see like what this turns into um i hope maker becomes like a series for nintendo yeah but, but super mario maker it just like it's a game that you, you didn't even think nintendo would ever make it's like they wouldn't open their doors this much, but yeah, I think that game is is so good. Community's number six. Community's number two. Wait, Super Mario Maker's not on either of your guys' lists. Oh, sorry, it's on mine. It's okay. not on mine at all. I was just waiting uh, for that. I was like, Paul, really? Paul gave Paul gave it an honorable mention. I remember that. I was like, I was surprised. At, okay, uh, Community's number six is Metal Gear Solid Five. Nice. Moving on to the number fives. Number five. Ori in the Blind Forest. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, like I'm just going ju- to I... quickly jump ahead. Also my number five. Okay. Nice. <laughs> that game's delightful. Like I said, if I hadn't had a terrible experience with it, it probably would have made my top ten as well. That game is so good. Let me tell you a little bit about Ori Paul, in the I'm Blind Forest. I'm looking at Forest. you. This is just going to be the, the you and me love and Ori moment brought sure. to you by us. I'm going to go. I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> sure. Let let me tell you a little bit about Ori in the Blind Forest. The thing that brings you into that game is like how beautiful it looks. The thing that keeps you playing is how flawlessly it executes every one of its mechanics it gives you and makes you apparently, feel like a badass by the end. Apparently all those environments were hand painted. Yes, that's true. That's insane. Yeah. Hand painted by one person. Yeah. That's inc- that yeah, that like, you, you said it exactly. That game looks so good, handles so well, and like like my biggest issue with it is I couldn't go back and play more of it because they lock you out at the end, which sucks. That part totally sucks, and I I can't, I'm just my fingers are crossed that when they give out that DLC, they change that idea. But I I think I sat down and just played that like in one sitting basically because I was just glued to getting as much as I could. I think it's a shame that like Ori will probably always be remembered as that really nice looking game that people from all over the world like made by like sending emails to each other when really yeah, it should be thing. focused that it is mechanically one of the best games made this year. It played perfectly. It, it is a really solid like Metroidvania style game. Yes. Yeah, it's it's real good. I yeah. love the upgrade paths. It's like I had so and the story's great too. Like it's it's it gets dark and you wouldn't expect that from these cutesy little creatures or whatever. Like that's a that's a hard hitting game. I I like Ori so much. Great Xbox One uh exclusive. Uh, you know, it's on PC too as well. But uh anyway. Yeah. John, you're number 5. Uh my number 5 is Box Boy for the 3DS. That game, once again, came out of nowhere. I think they actually announced it the, uh, on the Nintendo Direct the day the game came out. I think you're right. That does sound familiar. And it was fun from start to finish. Like, getting all the stars was great. Like, all the little costumes unlock is great. That was just a fun experience. I'm glad I had that, and I'm glad it came out. I would love for a spiritual successor to that, even gameplay-wise. Although, because, like, technically the story of Box Boy ends, but... Yeah. Community's number five is Xenoblade Chronicles X. Not surprised by that one. Moving on to number four. Also interesting to note that number five for the community is where they jumped up significantly in fervor. <laughs> like, in the numbers. Oh, in the votes for it? Yeah. Like That's true. Everything yeah. above now is all, like, ev- everybody had this on their list at somewhere. Right. And then once we get to three, they jump up exponentially again. Yeah, like, everybody literally had the top three. Yeah. Yeah. 
box boy, the game from January. Everyone remembers that was a lot. That was a January game. I didn't even remember that. It was a lot so early was, in the I year. Thought it was the summer, but yeah, I mean, it was a while ago. Yeah. Now that I think about it, that would, that would have been before Majora's mm-hmm. mask 3d. Cause I played that right afterwards. That was, a, it was a while ago that game. Yeah. Number four, Paul. Number four was a year long journey for me. Life is strange. That's is, also on my list is my number nice. four. The reason Stop. why it's so high up is because I usually don't like telltale like story based games very much at all. And I fell in love with Life is Strange in a way I wasn't ready for by the first episode and stayed in love with it to the point where every month I was looking up to see if there was a release date for the next episode. I kept up with this all year. Yeah. And I was super excited every single time I ran home like after work and would just like play the new episode the day Immediately. it came out. Yeah. 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 I'm going to save my uh, little blurb about it for a little later. Sure. Okay. Uh, my number four was, since I didn't enjoy Ori, I went the other direction for that genre, <laughs> Axiom Verge. There you go, okay. That was I, on my honorable mentions, but I knew it yeah. would be on yours, so I didn't bother. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. Uh, Axiom Verge, super fun game. Uh, love the hell of it. Great Metroidvania game. Didn't mind the fact that it was an 8-bit uh, style game, which some people didn't like, and that's why they veered more towards Ori. But I liked how, like weird the story was i liked the the music the atmosphere it made me feel like i was actually going through like an alien world the whole time the crazy amount of weapons you get were all fun even though only so many of them were useful and it's very rare that i will finish a game and then immediately start playing it again this is i think the only game this year or no the second game this year that i did that with nice and i i loved it i I meant to go actually get all the uh, trophies, and I think I stopped uh, one or two shy. So I, at some point, I'm going to go back to that game and play it again. I loved it. If you love Metroidvania games or games that play like the original Metroid or Super Metroid, get it. It's fun. It does some really cool things. Uh, my number four was Ax- uh, not Axiom Verge. It was Rocket League. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so we already talked about that a few times now. <laughs> sure. Uh, number four for Community was Fallout 4. Sure. Yeah, I can nice. see that. Yeah, they just want to match up with the fours. Yeah. I'm thinking at this point, based on my top three, I think they're going to differ from yours quite a bit because I'm pretty sure you guys didn't play these ones. Okay. So yeah. I'm excited to see what people are talking. What, what are you guys are going to say for? Mine are so obvious when I say them, but that's fine. <laughs> my, people can already figure out what my top three are. Paul, what's your number three? Undertale. Okay. Nice. All right. Again, a game that caught me completely off surprise. Um, the more you play that game the more it unravels into something way bigger. Like that game is like an iceberg or something where like you, if you just see like the surface, you're like, okay, yeah, there's so many fucking layers to that shit, dude. Holy shit. (laughs) There is a lot of stuff in that game. And the soundtrack is the best soundtrack I've heard all year. Easy. All right. John, number three. Mario Maker. All Uh, right. I knew I was going to like this one from the moment I saw it. I, I, when I saw it last year at E3, it was really cool, even though it was just super generic and basic. And they've added so much of that. that it looks like they're going to keep adding new things. Uh, all, anything that I mentioned, like, complaint-wise, that was missing from the game, they've already put in for free. They, like, it's also crazy to see Nintendo of all companies be like, hey, here's basically what we use to make our game, so you have fun with it. Yep. That's unheard of for a company like them, and I hope it gets so much support. Even though it basically turned into what I thought it would be, which would be like a Kaizo light simulator. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just so glad that it exists and that it's gotten like popularity and traction. Sure. My number three game was Tales from the Borderlands. Nice. Okay. Um, I didn't expect anything from this game. Um, Borderlands is fun, but I couldn't tell you like any of the story besides Vault Hunters? That's about it. That's a story, though. That's, honestly, like, yeah, exactly. There's not that's much of that story. All of their stories, exactly. Like that's there's not much of their story there. And and this is a game that's going to be like, oh, it's going to be all about the lore. You guys love the Borderlands lore, right? And no, I don't. But the characters they made were just were great. And it's it is so funny. Like it, it, I was shocked we, month after month when this was coming out, just how funny it was, and the characters they introduced, like Loaderbot. Like one of the characters of the year, if we had a cat, uh, uh, a category for that, like he's great. And 
I, you know, I'm a big fan of, of the Telltale Avenger games. I play, I bet, I guess I play all of them. Walking Dead season one was one of my, was my top game a couple years back whenever that came out. And yeah, this is my number three game. Um, so, you know, I hope they keep making like real strong ones like this. They have some duds every now and then, but you know, it's great when that one of them really hits. Okay. Yeah. Number three for the, so like we said, when the community, this is when they really amp up. Number three was Super Mario Maker for the community. Nice. Yeah. I'm on par with the community again. Yep. Number two, Paul. Number two is Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Nice. Right. That game is like literally every mechanic, either shitty or good in video games, thrown into it somehow, done perfectly and mixed together in a way that I didn't think like they could make all those different little gimmicky things in other video games work together. For better or for worse, there's some weird things with like your base and stuff that is some free to play bullshit, but I mean that's just kind of the way games go these days. That game plays almost flawlessly every time I played it. The big gripe with it that kept it from number one is that it doesn't even feel like a Metal Gear game to me because the story, while batshit crazy, isn't the batshit crazy that makes sense to me for that world. So yeah that game has its problems but it's so easy to overlook because i was enthralled by like every minute i spent in it cool john uh number two undertale all right i had probably the best experience that you could have playing undertale uh reese helped me through it anytime i got stuck which was wasn't that often but she had definitely had advice like hey you should do this uh she helped me get which was through... basically never like i don't i don't get stuck i need help it's cool. No, yeah. you know what I mean. <laughs> Fuck off. You know what I mean. But uh, I had a really good experience with it. She helped me get through Pacifist first, and then I got to experience Genocide and Hard. I got to like do all the endings that really matter in that game, and I Whoa, whoa hang on. My ending with... mattered. Excuse me. No, no, your ending really didn't matter. I liked my ending. I was fine with it. There's only one <laughs> ending that actually matters, and it's the full Pacifist one. Uh, the other stuff is just there to see. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, just, I had a great experience with it. Nothing had been spoiled for me before I went in. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, all the characters were great. I, I just loved the whole thing. I, it was just the perfect experience you could have had. I got to see everything that game had to offer, and I feel like I had a nice, complete thing. I, I feel like I, I got the best I could get out of it, and that's why it's as high as it is. Much like an ogre, there's layers to Undertale. Oh, my God. So I think we can all agree on that. Um, number two, my number two game of the year is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Um, I figured I was going to like this game because I liked the last Tomb Raider game, but just how much they improved this one, I, again, just kind of glued to it night after night, uh, upgrading Laura, getting all the really cool, like, triple shot arrows. I just had so much fun exploring that place, taking on the enemies, just doing everything that I could in that game. And like I, I just wanted to be like more story content, co- content, content. <laughs> um, because yeah, I had I had just so much fun, and that game looks gorgeous. Like it looks so good. Uh, it's a great. It's totally fun, and I can't wait, Paul, for you to get it on the PC this month. Uh, I'm glad it's finally getting uh, spread out a little bit, because so, more people need to play that game. It's it's a lot of fun. Number. T- Two game of the year uh, for the community was Splatoon. Nice. Yep. All right, final games. Final games. Number one game of the year, Paul. The best game that came out this year was The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> that game made me care about that world that the other two didn't. It was a good blend of like the over like Lee bullshit mechanical way that one played and like Number two, how they dumbed it down. It's like the perfect balance between those two and how it plays. All the animations, for the most part, except for when you're like on the horse sometimes and like looking around, are really, really nice. That world is expansive in a way you can't even imagine. Everything you do in that game, all the side missions and everything, make you feel like you are a person in this world and not that this world is built for your person. Like it is crazy how almost perfect that game is in every way. And. 
yeah, like, I just wish I had more time to play it, because there was so much that came out this year, and that game requires so much of your goddamn time, but I think I'm, like, 50 hours in, and I've loved every second of it. Even the small stuff that I usually hate doing in those open world things, I've loved doing. Cool. Great. All right. Uh, this year's been a little weird for me because I've had to do so much traveling and like I've barely been home. <laughs> oh, in a man. Minute. Yeah. Yeah. So it, <laughs> oh, it's. Man. Come, yeah. <laughs> it's it made me realize that there's been a shift in my like how I've been playing games and that. So I've had to go like thinking of what to make number one would have to be something that I've spent so much time playing and enjoying every moment of it. And really, the game that stood out to me the most was Final Fantasy Record Keeper. Oh, man. <laughs> That's great. That's perfect. That's great. There's no other way to put it. Like, I thought about what game I put the most time into this year. It's Record Keeper. I yeah. thought about what game I've had the most fun playing this year. It's been Record Keeper. I thought about what game I'm still interested in at this point, and it's Record Keeper. There's you were no playing other way it, to put it as we started it's, the call it's today. The last... I have been playing it during this podcast. It's the last thing I think about when I go to bed. It's the first thing I think about when I wake up. I want to spend my rest of the rest of my life with it. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Yep. It's true. I, I've been in an RPG mood. It's it's filled that gap. Uh it's I I haven't paid a cent for the game. Mood. I haven't paid a cent for the game. Still getting all everything out of it. I haven't been blocked by like, oh, like here's the block for like a free to play game. I have no complaints about this game. It's so weird. That's so, great. I mean, awesome. that's that's why I gave it my number one. Hey, mobile games have been here for years, and, and you finally got on the mobile game train this year. That's great. That's cool. Record Keeper it is. Uh, that is not on my list. My number one game of the year is Life is Strange. Yeah, I had a feeling. Yeah. Well, I mean, we were okay. down to one game list. So, uh, much like Paul said, yeah, that game, first episode came out January, just kind of blew things away, put a spin on the Telltale formula. And it was just, it was so down to earth. Like we talked about this on the spoiler cast. We made a whole spoiler cast for this game, but yeah, it's down to earth. The characters were relatable. There's twin peaks vibes in it. And like Paul, I was just glued to like their Twitter account. Like when does the next one come out? And as soon as it came out, as soon as Paul finished playing his copy of it, I would play his copy of it. And then I couldn't wait to just talk to Paul on the next podcast about if he enjoyed it or not. And every every episode ends with a cool cliffhanger and something crazy is going on. The characters and the world is cool. And, you know, uh, big story driven uh, game fan here. So, yeah, I I thought Life is Strange is super cool. And I I can't wait to see what uh, don't not. I think it's don't not entertainment is the developer does next. And I really need to go play. Remember me. Uh, their game previously to this. Uh, but yes, that was my favorite game of this year. And yeah, I'm glad it kind of just, it lasted the whole year. Like, yeah. it, like it was just, it was great. Like it was a whole year of enjoying this game. And that's, that's the best thing about episodic games is they're not just done in a, in a weekend or a month. It, it was a whole year of enjoying this. And yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. And hey, I bet you can guess what the community's game of the year uh, Most was. Most unsurprising game of the year for the community. It was Undertale. So that's the number one for the community. Here's an interesting stat for you guys, too. If you okay. take number six to ten on the community game of the year list here, you add up those numbers, they're still less than Undertale. Than the score Undertale got. Yeah. Yeah. Undertale won by quite a landslide. And we basically saw that pretty early on. And some others started to catch up, but they yeah, they couldn't take Undertale. Yeah. So Undertale took the community game of the year. That's great. <clears throat> lots of good games our, our lists were quite different and the uh, i'm i'm glad to see the community's list wasn't just nintendo games like it tends to be so that was cool <laughs> there's a lot of great games we listed there yeah um i believe we have one more section the pile of shame pile of shame yep every game that came out this year there's my pile of shame i'm done see everybody <laughs> so these yeah. are games that um we like didn't get to that we really wish we could have um yeah. because we don't really rank these i'm just gonna t- say the community's ones first yeah sure uh, the community the game they wanted to get to the most uh was <laughs> xenoblade chronicles x yeah which i think makes sense it came out in december so not yeah. a lot of people could get to that game um i have quite a few games on this list i have like one two three 
I have 10 games I wanted to get to that I didn't. I, I can probably think of more. I'm just adding them as I think of them. I have three. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I guess let's go in a circle until we can't do any more. Uh, uh, John, do you want to? Paul, start us. You always start us. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, because That's... I really, really uh, like that time era and period and like place they chose for that, and I kind of wanted to see how that played out. That's all on my list, too. I own it. I just hadn't put it in yet because I decided the PS4 is coming uh, uh, back to my parents uh, this Christmas, um, and I got it on the Xbox. I've heard so many good things about this one, especially because the last few people have just been not caring for, so I'm definitely looking forward to sitting down with this game. Uh, Chroma Squad. It is a strategy game where you make your own Power Rangers TV show and you fight monsters and basically make episodes of the show with a tactics based strategy fight. And like it apparently has like this crazy story. And basically, had I actually sat down and played this game, it probably would have cracked my top 10. I just love the concept. I love the gameplay. Uh, everything about it, I love. Uh, first one, mine, The Room 3. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Room series on mobile. Uh, 3 came out. I just never got around to playing it. Sure. Uh, my second one was Yoshi's Woolly World. I really, really wanted to try that out. Never yeah. got around to it. That's a cool one. Yep. Uh, Galaxy The Dimensional. Uh, another game that would have cracked my top 10 if I'd actually gotten to play it. That was actually my plan to play today so I could at least get a good feel for it. But I've been gone all day and just had no energy. And we started this earlier than I expected. But uh, basically just like a, a top-down like space shooter, like uh, free space and stuff like that. Or subspace. That was the game I was thinking of. Where you kind of just go around and it's all based around like an 80s cartoon motif. like Kind of like uh, uh, fuck, Robotech. So where you just go around and like everything's modeled 80s like it's all like I think when you pause the game it pauses like a VCR does uh, the gameplay is solid like dog fighting like top down dog fighting it's just a really cool concept and every time I played it at E3 I loved it but I just haven't played it since it's come out in consoles and yeah. PC. Uh, pick another one. Um, I never got to play that Shovel Knight DLC. Okay. No, uh, that was good. Plague of Shadows was good. Yeah, I I wanted I wanted to get to that. I just never got around to it. That's another game on my list. Cool. Um, I mean the top one on my list was Splatoon. Just never got around to it. Okay. Xenoblade Chronicles X. I uh, I actually went out of my way to make sure I had space on my hard drive, and I didn't have enough space on my Wii U, so I actually went out and bought an external hard drive so I could actually play the game. <laughs> Downloaded the patches and have not opened the game out of its packaging. Nice. Massive Chalice. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't really have much to say for these next ones. It's just I wanted to get to them. I couldn't. So we can probably just bang through these. Yeah, sure. Massive Chalice. Do you want me to just do my list? Or John, do you want to go back and forth? Oh, I thought Paul had more. Was I that, don't. Was that no, it? I'm had done. Three. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, I got a bunch more. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 5. Sure huge Metal Gear Solid fan. Uh, this was probably the first one that I've been able to play at launch that I did not play. I also did not play Ground Zeroes, or I didn't finish Ground Zeroes, so... Uh, I played Ground Zeroes. I, like, I started, like, I played a little bit of Ground Zeroes, and I liked it, but then, like, it was the day before I had to move that I started playing it, so... <laughs> sure. Yeah. And it's just been lost in the shuffle, so, unfortunately, I don't want to play Ground Zero, or I don't want to play Phantom Pain without finishing Ground Zeroes, even though it's so short. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's my logic. It's so short, then why not play that, then go into it, so... Eventually, Metal Gear. This one, this one's kind of funny. Uh, Destiny Taken King. <laughs> I wish I had finished <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There you go. <laughs> uh, Halo Five. I'm a huge Halo fan. Uh, just this game came out while I was gone. That's a good game. I have not. Every time I come home, I'm like, oh, I'll play it this time. That's a fun nope. Halo game. Uh, her story. I. Oh. I just really want to play her story. That was on my honorable <laughs> mentions, but I just didn't bother saying it. It's okay. Yeah, I heard some great things about that game. Sure. <clears throat> uh, does that, why do I have Xenoblade on here eh, twice? That's weird. Uh, <laughs> I just really wanted to play it. Uh, Dragon, Dragon Quest Heroes. So I really liked Hyrule oh. Warriors last year. <laughs> <laughs> I have no interest in that at all. I no. really liked Hyrule Warriors last year. Dragon, Warrior, Dragon Quest Heroes is supposed to be like that, but a little bit better. 
Uh, and I like the Dragon Quest characters, and they included my favorite character from eight, Yangus. So I was I'm gung ho about that. So at some point I'll play that. Cool. N plus plus. I have no good excuse for this. Shit, that was this year? <laughs> oh man. Add no, that to my pile. I have no good excuse for this game. Like I love N, I love N plus, and I for some reason I just let this one go by. Yeah, same here. That's that's on my list. Now now, now it's on my list. <laughs> Uh, these two I'm going to say together because they both have the exact same reason for being on here. Uh, Mad Max and Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yeah. I ordered them for Boxing Day. Uh, they, they were like 40 bucks off each. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'll grab them and I'll play Rise of the Tomb Raider for, uh, for Game of the Year discussion because yeah. it looks like good. And I'm like, all right, two day shipping. That should make it here in time. It's not here yet. That's crazy. That's insane. It's, it's shipped the 27th. It's still not here. Maybe it was ships in two days. No, it was yeah. as in it once it's shipped, it arrives in two days. Yeah, it, it says it was supposed to be here on the thirtieth. It's definitely the third of January. Yep, because yep. all the holidays are screwing it up. So it, it'll be here tomorrow. Great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my next one is volume. Oh yeah. Uh, from Mike Bithel, the uh, Binding of not Binding of Isaac, the um Thomas was alone. Thomas was alone developer. Yeah. Uh, that looks cool, and I was following it, and I, I want to play volume. Uh, I originally had Rainbow Six Siege on here, but I actually played that last night, so it's not there anymore. So that's all I've got currently. If I think of anything else before we're done, I'll say it, but that's my list. i got two more. First one, um, I wish I was brave enough to play Until Dawn. But I don't okay. play scary I games. I wish Until Dawn was cheaper, and then I would have bought it. <laughs> See, yeah. that's why I didn't put that or Halo on my pile of shame, because I'm not shameful of not wanting to spend $500 for one game to buy a system. <laughs> so. that's fine. I already have the system, so I'm just, like, debating, like, 70 Yeah, you <laughs> should be <laughs> shameful. <laughs> I've heard real cool things about that game. I don't want to pay full price for that thing, that's why. That's fair, um, yeah. Yeah, I just wish I, I was better with scary games so I could play that, because I've heard real cool stuff. Yeah, and my last one uh, is a game I bought a couple weeks ago on my phone. Downwell, I've heard real cool things about that too, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. That but game's so I, good. I ended up picking that up during the Steam sale. So I, it's just I've been trying to get through this third Phoenix Wright, and then I can finally play other mobile games again. Um, so I'm just waiting for that. And all right, so that's all the games we wanted to play that we played. Yep. All that. That's that's it. Now that's we're gonna t- it's the prediction time. Sean okay. or John, you should yell up to Reese and ask her what her game of the year was. She's in the chat unless she left again. I think she left again. I haven't seen because I asked a while ago because she said that was my number two of the year when we talked about a game. And so I said, what's your number one? And I think she left. Uh, she's still listed as being in the chat, so she might have muted it and she's recording something. Oh, OK, I'm okay, curious yeah. now. No, no, there she is. Here oh, okay. we go. Yeah. Predictions. Predictions. We'll chime in with, with Reese when she when she says her thing. Yeah, yeah. Um so I have these. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in a circle again, so we're not just picking on one person at a time. Um uh, I have them in the order uh John, Sean, and Paul, and and then community. Uh community only has one. Sure. <clears throat> uh John's first prediction was the PS4 gets a price cut of a hundred dollars. Uh I don't think that happened. I, I think a fifty. It, I think a fifty dollar one happened. Yeah, it got a price cut. Um, and then maybe if you throw in like game bundles, maybe you make fifty bucks there. Yeah, so oh, I, sure. I'd say you could argue that one. Yeah, you got. So you got close. You got close. Cool. <clears throat> I said the witness. Oh yeah. I'm. I'm assuming I. I wrote the witness down because it was going to be good. It's not even out yet, so I clearly missed that one. Um. Why did I put down the witness? I wonder if I put that down on the year before that. Yeah, I had that on the year before as well. Is that the transferring one? So You're I just, just moved it. I just year? moved it on. Like, here we go. <laughs> witness doubling down. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, Paul says that the Oculus Rift is going to be going to retail at two hundred fifty dollars this year. Okay, I'm going to just move yeah, that ahead when we get just to gonna that. Just going to move point. that. We're going to move that ahead. Okay, yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, the community's one thing was uh, that there will be more playable teasers. And we can nope, do that. Never really happened. Yeah, not a single one. It was just PT, and that even got pulled this year. So yeah. there's less playable teasers than there are. There was. Uh, John's next one was probably the NX one. 
was Nintendo teases, not announces the next handheld console. They didn't even do that. I don't mm. even think they brought it up during their last, like, yeah. uh, uh, not developer, uh, Stockholder conference. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, I wouldn't call it a tease yet. Like, they've so far said, like, we're not talk about, talking about the NX. We're not talking about the NX. Everything we've got is just, like, speculating. I, my my hats. only My only logic for thinking this is why this happened is that I think the whole thing that happened with Iwata kind of fucked up any plans they had and everything got bumped forward. I feel like if Maybe. if that hadn't happened, that this might have happened, but I'm not sure anymore. Because either way, it, it didn't happen. So, My next one. Uh, first one, I would say that it's been right. I predicted that the Morpheus would not be out. Cool. And it's, and it's not. I feel like so. that was a safe bet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Paul... Paul <laughs> said that Ubisoft <laughs> gets rid of Uplay. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> oh my god. Why would you think they'd be that brave? Uh, uh, all right, and another one from John. He uh, countered Paul's uh, Rift price yeah, yeah. and said that the Rift went to retail for 200 or less. Oh, snap. Which also has not happened yet, so we'll move that <clears throat> forward. Okay. Um, my next one, I, said, I just said Hotline Miami 2. I'm assuming again that I was expecting it to be good. Uh, and I'm going to say that was wrong. Not a lot of people seem very high on Hotline Miami 2. Game kind of sucks. A little bit. Paul says that the new Zelda gets pushed to 2016. He was exactly right. Safe yep. bet. Yep. Safe bet. <laughs> that was the safest bet ever. I think uh, I even agreed with him on that one. I'm like, yeah, that, that's pretty much right. Yep. John countered my Morpheus uh, <laughs> speculation by saying the Morpheus is going to retail at the very end of the year, Black Friday. Ooh, no. Oh. Um, I said that the Nemesis system shows up everywhere. I, I think, think that showed up once. I think that's that, safe for next year almost. I think it might be next year. So I'll move Yeah, give it a two year development cycle and yeah. then. Paul said that Street Fighter V comes out in April, and then comes out to right. all the other platforms in the fall. Neither happened. No. no. I think it, it's coming out somewhere around April-ish it's, this year. I think it's coming out... F- Actually, I think you are right with April. Hang I on. Could I could just push that forward. <laughs> yeah, you just push that forward. Uh, John... Uh, February said, 16 is when Street Fighter Five oh, drops. Still early in the year. Yep. Um, so we can't push that one forward. It has a release date. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> John also said that the new Zelda gets pushed to 2016. So you I, I knew I said that. I knew I said that at some point. Uh, I said that the new Star Fox is called New Star Fox. And it's bad. <laughs> That's so good. What is the actual name of it? Star Fox Zero. Star Fox yeah. Zero. So I was wrong, but I'm gonna keep the second half of it. That the new Star Fox is bad, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, sure. What I played so far is good, but the gimmick is weird, so it's like it's half. You could be right on this one. I'm thinking that's why it got delayed, so they could figure out what the fuck they want to do with it. Paul said that the Vita outsells the Wii U <laughs> yeah. for at least one month. Did I that ever that, happen? We did. I'm not. I don't know for sure. I'm gonna. No, ass- I don't think that. Uh, I don't in think. North America, that didn't happen. In Japan, probably. Uh, John had two more. Really? He says that, yeah, you had two more. You said Street Fighter V doesn't break exclusivity. Uh, I mean, you could push that one forward. Um, yeah, let's push that one forward. And Here's the thing. The way I see it, it's Capcom. So Street Fighter V is going to hold for half a year. I think I'm actually going to change that. The Street Fighter okay. holds. Hang on. Before we do new predictions, I want to yep. get to the old ones. Um, and let, John's last prediction is that the hotly anticipated Silent Hills yeah. is bad. Well, it didn't. It doesn't exist anymore. So it was so bad they couldn't we'll release it. Okay, uh, so I'm going to duplicate this. That sucks. None of us like chose a Konami thing, hey? Like at all? We would have been right. You huh. could have said anything. That was the closest thing. Silent Hills was the closest thing <laughs> we had. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make new predictions. Okay. So wait, what are we pushing forward first? Okay, Paul, I'm gonna go through yours first. Yeah. Are you keeping that the Rift is going to retail for two fifty? Yeah. Okay. So I'll put that one there. Are you gonna say Ubisoft is getting rid of UPlay? <laughs> you know what? As a hopeful thing, like I hope I'm right. So yes, let's push okay. that forward. Push that one forward. Are you gonna say that the new Zelda gets pushed to twenty seventeen? No. Okay. Um, you can't keep the Street Fighter release one. 
Is the Vita going to outsell the Wii U for at least one month? No. No. Okay. So you have two at the moment. John, which ones do you want to get pushed forward? Are you going to say the price, the PS4 is getting a price cut of $100? At this point, I would expect another 50. You're I'm going to say a 50. You're going to say a 50 one? Okay, we can add a $50 price cut for tw for uh, 2016. Nintendo teases not announces the next handheld console. I'm going to change that to Nintendo uh, announces something about the NX at E3. Maybe not directly shows the final product. They're just going to reveal like, what like it is. So Nintendo re Nintendo reveals what the NX is at this year's E3. That's like what it looks question. like or what it does. What do you think? Uh, both. Okay. But I'm going to say we're still at least a year away from NX ever coming okay. out. Nintendo reveals what the NX looks like. Slash is. Slash is, but not out. It's pretty safe. Yep. Um, are you sticking with Rift going to retail for 200 or less? Sure. Okay. The Morpheus is going to come out at the end of the year, Black Friday. Um, does that have a release date, though? I don't know. I'm going to look that I up. That I, thought, I thought it did. I don't think it does. Oculus and um, the other one do. I'm going to push my witness HTC. one. HTC. Uh, hmm. it, it has a release date of first or second quarter 2016. Okay, so we're not going to push okay. that one. Then. I'm going to, yeah, cancel that one. Yeah. Oh, sorry. John, you had one more that I accidentally skipped over. Um... Ubisoft wins worst game company and Uplay goes nowhere. Oh, by Uplay going nowhere, that means Uplay stays. Yeah. Which that part was true. That, that part uh, was true. Did, I, didn't Ubisoft actually win worst company? Or no, Konami. Dude, no, might Konami. Have that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're not a U.S. company, so I think, well, technically Ubisoft's French. I don't know. Well, are you? <laughs> does Zelda get pushed to 2017? Uh, I'm going to tweak that slightly. And I'm going to say uh, Zelda gets pushed to January 2017. Oh, specific. Okay. Holy okay. shit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So new Zelda gets I, pushed. I, I, have a feeling right, I have a feeling right now Zelda is intended to come out around Black Friday to be like it, the Xenoblade slot basically yep. from this year. Sure. And it's going to barely miss it like Star Fox did. Okay. It's going to get moved to January or like first week of February, but I'm going to stick with January. Okay. Um, so Street Fighter V is coming out. Do you want to keep that it, it stays on the PlayStation 4 all year? I, uh, I'm going to say it stays on the PS4 and PC because it's already confirmed for PC uh, oh, yeah, for yeah. six months. For six months. Doesn't break exclusivity for first six months. And you don't, we're not pushing Silent Hills forward. Okay, so I'm pushing the witness forward. That's going to be a good game. I'm going to actually put is good. <laughs> so we know what we're talking about. I'm not pushing forward Morpheus doesn't come out this year. I'm not pushing forward Hotline Miami 2. I'm going to say that the Nemesis system is showing up everywhere again. Okay, then this would be the year it would happen. <clears throat> um, I'm going to counter John's. I'm going to say Zelda does come out in November, I'm going to say. So you're going to say with what I originally thought, but I'm think you're just saying there's no delay? I'm saying, yeah, it doesn't get delayed, and I'm saying it's not as late as yours. So I'm not saying, like, just early December. I'm saying it's a November one. Actually, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to say October. Oh, wow. Right. Zelda, October. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to put new Star Fox is bad. All right. Any new predictions we want to make? Okay. Um, I'll start off, I guess. Okay. I'm going to make a bold one and say this year... Even though, like, World of Warcraft Legion is releasing, Overwatch becomes the highest selling game for Blizzard this year. Because people are sick of WoW and Diablo and stuff. They want something new, so they're going to buy... More people will buy Overwatch than they will the expansion to WoW. Okay, okay. If people have ideas for predictions in the chat, throw them out, and we can maybe assign them to people that want to take that challenge. Any predictions for Final Fantasy VII Remake? Anything about that? Does it come out? It's tricky because I think it's not actually Square working on it. I think it's supposed to be Cyber Connect 2, which means it could actually like come out this year. Episodic or something? So what do you, what do you, th someone want to make a prediction about Final Fantasy VII? Nope. You know what? I'm, if it's, I'm going to say if it, is episodic like people are thinking <clears throat> and like was implied it come the first episode drops this year okay first episode i'm just gonna say part because we don't really know yeah first part of ff7 remake comes out 
I'm going to say the first part comes out early 17. Like it gets announced with an early 17 release. Speaking of uh, Square, what's going on with Final Fantasy 15? <laughs> Where is that? Oh. <laughs> Let's get our Square representative on the phone. Yeah. Oh, here, here's okay. Kingdom Hearts 3 this year. Anyone want to make a prediction on that one? Nope. Nope. No, it's never safe to make a Kingdom Hearts prediction. Okay, uh, is Last Guardian supposed to come out this year? I have another prediction I want to make. Okay, all right. Uh, Sony and Kojima Productions release either like a teaser or something for their first project. Oh, they they do a playable teaser? Not a playable teaser, just like they... Kojima like officially announces like maybe with screenshots or something the first thing he's doing since Konami teases his new IP. Okay. Uh, I, I got a prediction. All right. Uh, Konami only releases one console game this year, and it's Pro Revolution Soccer. I have another prediction. One sec. Yep. Only one <laughs> console game, and it's soccer. Paul. Konami announces the next Metal Gear te- uh, development team. Okay. Yeah, Matt, I think that's a safe bet. They've already like put up uh, want ads for like employees. Yep. So you're saying there's going to be another Metal Gear game? I- I'm not saying uh, that they're announcing th- the it- game, but they're okay. definitely going to be announcing that they're working on one. Okay. There's already confirmation. Like they're looking for staff. There's been <laughs> yeah. people have been showing job postings. There is another Metal Gear soon to be starting development. Oh, so should I take that prediction off? It's like it's already happened. Is that what we think? I'm going to say. I- I Has... think it's like almost a done deal, but who knows? Okay, it, I'll, it I'll could leave it be on. like behind the scenes. So I think leave it on there. Okay, I'm gonna say, and I don't know if this has happened already. Is, is there a Metal Gear Pachinko machine? I want to say there is. I will. Is look there it. a no Phantom idea. Pain specific one that? Yeah, features, wasn't that actually advertised? It features quiet and her Bro, breasts. That totally sounds like a yeah, thing. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid is getting a Pachinko machine. Okay, I was gonna make that prediction. Okay. <laughs> but if it's already a thing, then never mind. Um, do you think Nintendo announces any more Maker games? Or is it too soon? Too soon. Yeah. Too soon? Okay. Okay. I would save that for the year after. I'm trying to think of some. I think <laughs> I think the NX gets its real name. Oh, chat. <laughs> You see something good in the chat? Yeah. Never mind. There's a lot of good stuff in the chat. Okay. Uh, some people are saying that uh, Konami or K- Konami, Kojima does a Kickstarter. I don't think so. No, I don't. I agree. I don't think he's, so. He's already got the Sony deal. I can't see him doing a Kickstarter. Do you want me to say no Kickstarter for Kojima? For you guys? I mean, sure, I guess. I, I'm going to say that on the caveat that Del Toro starting a Silent Hills spiritual successor Kickstarter does not count. Okay. Actually, because I can see Del Toro doing that. Sure. I was gonna what Comet SX said in the chat here. I was gonna like do something related to that. I think there is like I don't know what it would be. Maybe like a civil lawsuit or something against Tim Schafer after this fig deal goes horribly awry. Tim Schafer banned from Kickstarter. Something. Sorry, who's who's gonna do a lawsuit against Tim Schafer? Uh, let's just say that like um. Just like anyone you're saying? No, let's just say that Fig ho- fails horribly, pisses off like thousands <laughs> that of investors or whatever. Something happens with Fig that just like makes it fail so fucking horribly. Okay. Okay, I need, I need, I, I think we got a good number. I want to have well, at least one more. I'm trying to think of something uh, that it's a little different. Um, or do you guys have any uh, ones specific to like a game being good or bad? Maybe we don't. You haven't touched any of those. I don't even know what the hell's coming out this year. I'm gonna say Mirror's Edge Two gets. I'm gonna say basically it gets received kind of the exact same way. It's good, but no one bought it. It's Probably. good, but still it doesn't reach sales goals. I'm trying to think of something specific to Xbox. There's gotta be something specific to Xbox that would be interesting to say. Uh, maybe um, Halo Wars Two related. Or Gears of War. 
See, because like the only thing I could think of is like Gears Four is received warmly, or like I can't think of anything good. I'm trying to think of something like from the actual division. Like, what would be new? anything Quantum Break related or Cuphead related? Uh, well, Cuphead is confirmed for this year, right? I think so. I think I think Quantum um, Quantum Break is as well. It got pushed to the next year, so it was supposed to be this year. Oh, someone's saying Quantum Break is pushed to 2017. Never mind. I'm going to say Mighty Number no. 9 is supposed to be released February 9th. It gets pushed back again. <laughs> that, I feel like that's almost a safe bet at this point. And people I I heard lose their about. shit and throw computers out of office buildings. That's the whole <laughs> prediction. <laughs> Going too specific for the win. <laughs> I feel so bad for people that back that. Holy shit. That's so rough. Okay, I think I think we have a lot. Unless you want to get one more in, because there's a lot here. Nothing's coming to mind. Okay, then I think we're good. I think we're good. I think this has been an episode, people. Yeah, I think this has been an episode. Um, so thanks everyone for listening. Uh, we're not doing any questions or anything this week, um, but regular scheduled episodes will start up again. Uh, if people want to send in questions and and news and topics and stuff like normal, it's a uh, top down perspective at gmail.com at TDP podcast on Twitter or our Facebook group, blah, blah, blah. our Facebook group, just search top down perspective. This has been the game of the year. Um, oh, Hey, what was your guys games of the week? Rainbow Six of the year? Siege, technically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd, probably say, I'd probably say siege as well. Mine as destiny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't play much this week. I've been busy with,